when you flip the pages of Spanish football history, you might notice a certain standout season. A season where all the tables were turned. A season full of strange and surprising results. A season that could be hard to analyze on paper. Let's review together the 99-2000 Spanish football season in detail. The Spanish 99-2000 season could be known to some because of the historical and only La Liga title for Galician club Deportivo de La Coruña, but it's so much more than that. Let's rewind to the beginning, precisely in the summer of 99 with the following information. The title favorites going into the season were title holders Barcelona, Real Madrid, who didn't win the La Liga title since 97 with manager Fabio Capello, but were crowned European champions in 98. And the last challenger was the up-and-coming Valencia under the management of Claudio Ranieri, who won the Copa del Rey in 99. The most notable changes and transfers that happened in the summer was Ranieri leaving Valencia for Atletico de Madrid, who just bought Hasselbank and other notable players. So in came Hector Cooper to replace the Italian at Valencia. Madrid on the other hand were in a phase before the Galacticos era, but still managed to have a high spending transfer market as they brought in players like Salgado, Elguera, and the second most expensive transfer in history at that time, Nicola Anelka. Barcelona had lesser reinforcements in the summer, with the arrival of Ajax star Litmanen and a young Simao. The most notable signing for Deportivo was the top goalscorer of Tenerife, Roy Mackay. And the Galician club was not far away from the powerhouses of Spain, especially in the last seasons at that time, as they lost the league title in 94 by goal difference. And after their big partnership with the Canal Plus channel, the club spent big on players in the last couple of seasons. But after new manager Javier Iroreta took over, and following a sixth position at the end of the 98-99 season, Deportivo were not one of the favorites. The Spanish season opened as usual with the Supercopa de España, and small glimpses of the crazy season ahead were evident in the two matches, as Valencia won the cup after a thrilling 4-3 aggregate win against Barcelona. And following a typical start in the league for both Barcelona and Real Madrid, the strange result started in September after the Catalan club lost against Deportivo Alavés, who were struggling throughout the last season. And after Real Madrid entered a winningless streak that was extended to almost two months. But despite that, the management and the board was patient with the Welsh manager John Toshak. Valencia also was struggling as they entered a streak of defeats after they lost their four opening matches of the season, but managed to win their first match against none other than Madrid in the Santiago Bernabeu. Deportivo de la Coruña started the season with a league debut hat-trick from the Dutch striker Roy Mackay. And the Galician team was full of experienced and confident players like the solid Brazilian Donato, Moroccan centre-back Nouruddin Nabet, and the skills and flair of the other Brazilian Jaumínia. And following a big win against Barcelona by two goals to one, Deportivo solidified their challenge for the title, and the standings at the end of October was proof of that. Madrid, on the other hand, played in a tense Clásico in the Camp Nou, which saw Raúl's famous gesture. But the Los Blancos was quickly swept aside by the struggling Atletico de Madrid by three goals at the Bernabeu. And the surprising thing was that the manager Toshak survived for an extra two weeks until he was sacked. So in came Vicente del Bosque as caretaker manager who was managing the youth team at Madrid and was always hesitant of coaching the first team in the previous seasons. But the results didn't get better for Los Blancos. And in December, the Santiago Bernabeu witnessed a historic loss when Real Zaragoza came in and won by five goals to one, which left Madrid in a spiral down to the 16th position in the league after 14 matches. And with the accumulating debt and the flop of record signing Anelka, club president Lorenzo Sanz was under tremendous pressure. 
The tables were turned in the league standings, with a Galician duo at the top of the table, especially after Deportivo were on fire and won seven straight matches. However, entering the new year, the pressure was mounting on the Galician club, as losses away from home were beginning to pile up as they lost five straight matches away from the Riazor Stadium. But seeing as it was an extraordinary season, they didn't lose the top spot. Following the big loss of Madrid against league leaders Deportivo by 5 goals to 2, and the match that saw Jaumina's famous and skillful Lombretta, Los Blancos were finally back on the right track in the league as they entered an unbeaten streak despite numerous injuries throughout the squad. And in Europe, Madrid got to the semi-finals following their big away win against United at Old Trafford. But their hopes of mounting a comeback in the league were shattered after they lost against Racing in the Bernabeu, courtesy of goals from Salva, who ended up being the top goal scorer of the league with 27 goals. The Blaugrana was inconsistent in terms of results in the last couple of months, especially after Van Gaal's famous spat with Rivaldo, as the team lost the Clásico by three goals to nil. And then lost two consecutive matches with the same result against Mallorca and Oviedo. But Barcelona managed to get back on the right track after big wins against leaders Deportivo, Valencia and Atletico Madrid, who were struggling throughout the season as the Roche Blancos replaced Ranieri for Antic. But the Serbian couldn't turn the season around as the club was on their way towards the second division, just four years after they won a historic domestic double in the 95-96 season with the same manager. But they're not alone, as Real Batiste and Sevilla, ex-champions as well, were also on their way to the second division. Maybe the only bright spot for the Roche Blancos in the season was their qualification to the Copa del Rey final after winning by three goals to nil against Barcelona in the first leg of the semi-finals. And when the two teams got out to meet in the second leg at the Camp Nou, Barcelona refused to participate after the Spanish Federation refused to change the date of the match as it clashed with the national team matches, thus the Blaugrana didn't have enough players to participate. However, on the other side of the city, Spaniol got to the final after beating Real Madrid and won against the Roche Blancos in the final at the Mestalla to win their first title since 1940. And in the last couple of weeks of the season, Barcelona missed the chance to capitalize at the top of the standings after they lost at the Cup now against Rayo Vallecano, who qualified for Europe next season. Similar to the 94 season, Deportivo entered the last match with the fate of the league in their hands, and they won the battle to lift a historic title. And they achieved that with the lowest points tally for a champion in La Liga history. And because of that, the media might label this as a poor season in terms of quality. But when you see that three Spanish teams were competing in the semi-finals of the Champions League, opinions might differ. As Madrid won against Bayern München with the help of Anilka's two crucial goals home and away, and Valencia won the Spanish encounter against Barcelona to face Madrid in the final at Paris. And for the first time in the history of the competition, two teams from the same country meet in the final. And continuing with the events of this crazy season, Real Madrid won with ease as Los Blancos scored three goals against one of the best defenses in the Spanish league and lifted their record eighth European Cup trophy. This season could be regarded as a turning point for Spanish football, as it sparked changes throughout the league, as Perez won the elections in the summer and started the Galacticos era, while Barcelona, after seasons of irrelevance, started a new era with Juan Laporta. And although Atletico went down, they discovered and gave a chance for a new talented player in the Segunda, who was named Fernando Torres under the guidance of Luis Aragones. And Sevilla hired ex-keeper Monchi as sporting director immediately after they went down to start a new and long era of success. And Del Bosque, who came as a caretaker at first, 
has proved himself and took the job permanently, which opened up a lot of opportunities for him, the most important being him taking over the Spanish national team and lifting the greatest cup in football. Perhaps the only club that didn't have a brighter future was Deportivo, as the owner continued spending big amounts in the following seasons, and despite winning the Copa del Rey and reaching the Champions League semi-finals, the Galician club quickly fell from grace as debt kept piling up. <laughs>